Uh, so you grew up on a farm in the French countryside, Chef. Yes. Uh, do you think your rural roots have influenced the way you approach food? Of course. I think it always keeps me rooted. I've been in New York for almost more than half of my life there. But uh, I've always uh, stayed very French and true to my roots. But at the same time, I choose cooking because I wanted to discover the world with it. I wanted to travel. And being in New York, I think I am totally surrounded by every cuisine, every culture. Uh, and um, it does sometimes influence my cooking as well. So while I remain very French, like today, I just made a couple of dishes about uh, Bouli Sud, the Mediterranean. So of course the Mediterranean, it's France as well. We have a, quite a, a piece of the coast, uh, but it's also Italy, Spain, Greece, North Africa, Turkey, and the entire Eastern and Western Mediterranean. And uh, I think it, uh, it's quite stimulating for me to be able to uh, do a cuisine who borrow other fragrance in the in the making. Do you feel that passion for other food cultures and that kind of um, curiosity is essential in a chef? Of course, I think we see that. I think in, and uh, we see that. I mean, I've seen that with also many American chefs. I think I've seen that with a lot of British chefs and a lot of chefs who uh, need a Scandinavian chef who has travel well the world to know exactly what do they want to cook now, where do they want to focus. Some of them focus on um, Italian food, some of them focus on French, some of them focus on farm to tables, but, uh, or Asian or Indian. And, and so I think it's, uh, it's incredible than uh, cooking, it's universally very good today. Uh, you go to South America and you have some of the finest restaurants with indigenous ingredients from there and talented local chef uh, who grew up maybe in Europe, learned with the finest chef in Europe or other places in the world and came back home and transformed their homeland. Do you think that willingness to embrace other cultures is a big advantage that cities like New York and London have over the more traditional food capitals? Or do you think places like Paris? I think, no, no, I think the big capital, Paris, New York, Milan, uh, th there are certain places where you cannot just bring everything. I think London, you can bring it all. Uh, New York, you can bring it all. But Tokyo, don't bring it all. You know what I mean? It's going to be Japanese first. Paris, it has to be French first. You go to Milan, it better be Italian first. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think other cities can are culturally much more mixed to begin with. And I think that creates, I think, an emulsion of, uh, of uh, creativity and ethnicity in the cooking. French cuisine is revered the world over and considered by many to be kind of a classic staple. Um... It's like when you build a beautiful architecture First, you start by, you know, creating something very sound and often referred by the most classical application of uh, architecture. And then after, you can certainly create something above where it becomes more personal and I think more of a stronger expression of yourself. And I think in cooking, I think French cuisine have been, I think, the sort of the, the mother nature of, of old cuisine. And uh, why I think, you know, today we see everybody think that farm to table is a new thing, than um, having your own farm attached to your restaurants and all that. But I think in France, I grew up with that all my life. My parents grew up with that. It was really local, ingredient driven, uh, the ingredient was the most important thing to begin with. It didn't matter what you had to cook. What was important was what are we going to first cook with and then decide what we're going to cook out of it. And I think uh, this you see in a lot of new generation of chefs, I think they, they pay a lot of attention on ingredient. And uh, it's often the beginning of their 
creativity, then the spontaneity goes along with that. Do you think customers are becoming more receptive to that as well and understanding that ingredients and sourcing are incredibly important? Yeah, but also customers don't want to be too confused. And I think what's important is to keep customer um, sort of happy with uh, maybe a, a cooking who is focused and as a reference. Um, I've seen a lot of creative chef, but uh, after a while, um, do you want to go back to that place? Because it was such an explosion uh, the first time, but you don't want to have a second explosion. You just, you know, so you really want to feel then, uh, despite the creativity of the chef, uh, there is a real sort of understanding of classic combination, classic flavor, classic texture, and classic uh, application to cooking. Um, that's how I feel now. Some other chef might feel other way. <laughs> but I think uh, there is a real uh, return in New York, for example, I see a lot of um, young chefs are really trying to focus on tradition and understand tradition. And even they're creating restaurants who are a little retro, a little, you know, little 60s maybe and try to look at the food then and try to reinvigorate this kind of tradition. Uh, they still memories of that food uh, live it there and vivid and, and, and so I think uh, it's, it's, it's good to see it and just like in fashion you look back in order to look forward. Uh, speaking of looking forward Social media is playing uh, a very important part in the food world these days. Yes. Do you think the fact that chefs are increasingly under pressure to create dishes that are incredibly photogenic uh, and marketable is making them more creative or is it more of kind of a burden? Is it something that you don't want to interfere with you in the kitchen? I think at the end, it, at the end it's not all about social media. It's not all about um, trying to provoke the world with what you do. It's about taking care of your customer, making sure that customer felt connected with you and the customer come back to you because they love you for what you do, for who you are, and for what you really stand for. And I think um, for me, it's more important than anything else. I see sometimes young chefs who are trying to raise, like, you know, oh, I'm getting at 50,000 follower on Instagram and uh, I'm getting famous but sometimes it's a bit of a smoke and mirror uh, I think the true I think the the true success of a chef is in his longevity and in his uh, sort of um, stability longevity and and really his commitment to what he care for his customer I think that's how I feel but uh, again I'm not the only voice of chef. So we're starting to see, uh, well, we've already seen a massive shift in the restaurant world, uh, kind of away from formality and into making restaurants a little bit more accessible for the customer. What do you think of that? Well, I see that Aston Martin is pulling out cars more expensive, more refined, more powerful, more sophisticated. Um, everything I look at, every, everybody who is in luxury is trying to bid and create something even more luxurious, more refined, more performant. And I think fine dining, I don't think it's going out of sight luxury in fine dining, I think, but it definitely, uh, you know, you can wear, uh, you can wear a $200,000 watch and still wear sneakers and jeans. So, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, to me, it's not about being casual, it's about being very professional. And um, I, enjoy, I enjoy the luxury I gave in fine dining. I have all the level of restaurants. And Danielle is the fine dining to me. And I really enjoy the art of service, the art of offering a setting who is timeless, where it's sophisticated, it's lively, and yet is unpretentious and it has absolutely, uh, it, it, it really transports you and don't bore you and, and yet it, it really connects with the past and 
feel present. And I think that's how I want fine dining to be. It really has a little bit of a connection to the past. Because otherwise, I mean, now, everywhere I'm going, it's, um, we don't know if you should call it fine dining or not, but the chairs are cheap, the china is cheap, the, uh, the, the setting is cheap, uh, everything is cheap. And, and, and to me, we consider that the new fine dining. No, I don't think so. It's casual dining, yes. Uh, fine dining, I want to be seated on the best leather. I want to be touching the best wood. I want to be touching the best china, the best silverware, the best glassware. Uh, I want to feel surrounded by quality, by luxury, by... I want to be surrounded by people who have been very well trained, are genuine in their confident and genuine in service, and who really have a story to tell. And, um, but only time will tell the result of the shift in casual dining um, being sort of fine dining. I think there is amazing talent right now. Of course, at the end, it's not about the china, it's not about the silverware, it's not about the leather, it's not about the wood, it's about the food. And so, of course, you have those restaurants who have amazing food and in a very casual way, but I just hope that they will last 20, 30 years and not burn out too fast and feel like, okay, I need to close it now to reinvent myself again because I am at the edge of breaking down. Because it's about experience as well. Yeah, on. and I think we need everything in the world. And I think uh, I have, um, I'm a generation maybe who is a little bit more conservative, mm -hmm. but I appreciate being where I am. Uh, I think uh, in the new gener generation of chef, still many of them are, like every one of us, we are still looking at, you know, what do we want to be next or what we really want to be now. And I think that's always, I think, the, uh, the importance for a chef is to never take it for granted. Continue to innovate but never lose where you've come from. Yeah. yeah. And innovation sometimes, it's about going back into tradition and reinventing it itself. I love to do that, and especially with French cuisine. It has so much history, it has so much reference, it has so much, and, and um, so much talent over centuries have proven that um, it's a cuisine we can renew itself. Okay. Well, we're sitting in the Mandarin uh, Oriental Hotel right now. Uh, with what we've just speak, been speaking of, are you a fan of dinner by Heston? Because that seems to I kind love of, it. I was going to say, it seems to kind of be exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Looking at the past, and, but giving it a new twist, right? Yeah, very much, absolutely. And, uh, and I think uh, Aston is, is, is a very interesting restaurant. It's a whole different organization than uh, we have. But at the same time, I think it, it has a perfect... Uh, and I'm happy that Aston is doing something more casual. I only knew Aston at the Fat Duck and having uh, Aston at diner. I think it, it gave the opportunity for his fans and customers to discover another side of him. And I think that's what I enjoy in cooking, is not only trying to be the best chef in the world, but trying to also provide wonderful, authentic, and honest food at a very approachable price.